Michael brings into sharp focus the issue of sexual harassment and assault in the workplace. Let's discuss from a legal perspective how such sensitive cases should be handled. What kind of protection or support is provided to complainants while legal procedures and police investigations are underway? So, of course, as you heard, Remy Allen Windy has been criticised over his handling of the case. Is it justified. We'll know, of course, he's refused to even reveal the nature of the complaint. Of course, we know from other reports it's likely to do with allegations of sexual misdemeanors. We're joined now by Patani Kuna, Director in the Employment Law Practice at Cliff Decker Hoff Mayor. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I wanted to start with um, what should be done. Is there a standard procedure when an employee or employees approach a manager to discuss claims of any type of sexual abuse in the workplace. Is there a clear framework of what you should do? Yes, there is, Sally. Good evening to you and to all the viewers. There is, and we find that uh, in the Code of Good Practice on the handling of sexual harassment in the workplace, which stems from the Employment Equity Act. Now, the Employment Equity Act is, is quite specific that sexual harassment is a form of discrimination. Now, that specific code sets out or defines what is sexual harassment, and it goes on to say what employers should do, for example, having clear policies in the workplace, uh, which uh, it communicate the employer's stance on sexual harassment and also it has to be communicated to the employees to everyone within the employer's premises and it needs to set out what should happen when somebody is sexually harassed mm. and that is from the basis of the victim and also what management or the employer has to do now the Employment Equity Act also states that as soon as allegations of breach of the act, in this instance by through sexual harassment, those allegations need to be brought to the employer immediately. Now that's within reasonable time or without undue delay. I just heard on the clip that there is suspicion or belief that these allegations go as far back as 2012. That's quite a long time. Now the employer needs, needs to investigate and if they don't investigate or don't take action, they may be held mm. accountable for the conduct right. of that employee. Let me jump so in quickly. It's quite clear. Sorry, sorry, I just wanted to jump in on that. You spoke about um, if there's rumours sort of circling. Uh, and, and this is the thing, is if an employer uh, is not made aware by someone saying, look, this happened to me, but they're hearing rumours, mm. corridor talk, but no one comes forward, can they act? Mm. Should they act? What must they do? Well, the question is, where do these rumours come from? I mean, you don't just hear rumours out of nowhere. It's not in your head. Yeah. The moment you hear discussions or rumours, so to say, be it in the corridors, be wherever, you need to be paying attention. This is the this is where uh, functions such as human resources in 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 organisation come in handy because they are mostly part of the management team that looks after employee wellness. So if there are rumors, pay attention to them, find out is this a rumor or is the credibility to what is being said. You can't just ignore it just because somebody hasn't specifically come forward. Again, we need to be mindful that sexual harassment is quite a sensitive type of misconduct. Mm. It comes with shame. I mean, the act speaks about impairing your dignity so it's not something that somebody would readily or outright admit or come and say, I've been sexually harassed. Yeah. It takes time for other victims. So there are many considerations as things unfold. Yeah, that's so true. And, and also, um, am I right that if you have a suspicion that someone uh, is um, doing something like that in the workplace, but you don't have hard facts and you think that they may have abused, say, person X, you don't have a right to out that person and to force that person who may have been sexually harassed uh, or sexually abused to speak out because that's, that's another kind of infringement of rights. Am I correct in that? Well, well, the, the wording of the Act says, that, that is the Employment Equity Act, it says 
if it is alleged that someone has contravened the act by way of sexual harassment in this instance, bring it to the attention of the employer immediately. Now, whether that person, the victim, does confirm the allegations or come forward, that becomes a different consideration. But when you do become aware or suspect that somebody is being sexually harassed. I mean, in this instance, there have been, they've been uh, rumors that it was a quid pro quo kind of sexual harassment, sex for favor, sex for a job. So, I mean, you'll find that the victims are quite vulnerable people in, in yeah. society. They're thinking about feeding their families. They're thinking, geez, with the rising unemployment sure. rates in South Africa, it's this is my opportunity. So there's kind of an unequal relationship going on between the victim and the alleged perpetrator. So whether or not they confirm the allegations, that is kind of second part of the inquiry. But if you do have reasonable suspicion, I must say reasonable suspicion, because also falsely accusing somebody is quite a serious issue. So if there is credible or reason, reasons to believe that that is happening, yeah. bring it to the attention of the employer through HR and whatever channels are available. So there is quite a lot of um... Uh, duty on the part of the employer to, to try and investigate as soon yes. as they hear anything. I want to ask you about when a matter gets referred to the police. Can, is it only the complainant that can say, I want to take this to the police? Or can a company or a manager say, this needs to go to the police? Well, usually it would be the alleged victim, and I say alleged because we have presumption of innocence until somebody has been proven to be guilty. It's usually the complainant, and the complainant in this instance would be the, the, the actual recipient of the conduct, and they would then have to have to say, I this is what happened to me, this is the evidence I have, these are the witnesses I can bring forward to confirm this. Again, and it now goes to the standard of proof between criminal processes and civil processes. In criminal processes, it's proof beyond reasonable doubt. And so now you would need to bring forward that evidence. You would need as, as, as much as you can bring forward to prove that it did happen. So sorry, I, 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 I didn't quite hear your answer. Uh, can a company lodge uh, a criminal case on behalf of half of one of their employees that they believe has been sexually abused in the workplace? The employee would have to, to so do the it individual. themselves because they okay. are the victim. So the company cannot but do that. But the company can yeah. take action internally by way of, of for course. example, disciplinary process. I hear, which and is... they can offer the employee support. Yeah, so, so it sounds like what the, uh, the DA is doing in terms of appointing this independent advocate to, to look into the matter uh, for them is the right call. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about something that uh, Premier Alan Windy has been criticised uh, for, but he's been pretty adamant right from the get-go. He said, I'm not going to reveal names. No one is expecting that, of course. But he has said he wouldn't even reveal the nature of the complaint. Uh, only when these other anecdotal reports came out around sexual abuse allegations uh, of some form against Albert Fritz, do we presume that that's what this uh, uh, involves? Um, if indeed he was asked, as he says he was, by the complainants, not only not to reveal their names, but not to reveal the nature of this, is he, is he doing the right thing by, by staying absolutely mum on this? Because... You certainly can see it sounds like he's taking a bit of a hands-off approach. On the other hand, you could say he's doing exactly what the complainants asked. Well, without really being directly involved with the facts, I wouldn't say, yes, he's being correct or not. But if, if the victims have asked for confidentiality, which is reasonable, I mean, if you're dealing with allegations against the public figure, the last thing you want is for your name to be out there without your consent, for, 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 for the issue to be tried in the media. So it is possible that this is being done in consideration of protecting or safeguarding confidentiality until the investigation has been concluded and it has established whether or not not the, these allegations are credible and warrant further action. So it is possible that this is really part of keeping confidentiality because there is an internal process underway.
All right. Well, I want to thank you so much uh, this evening for, for bringing some clarity into what is a very complicated and a tricky uh, terrain to navigate sensitively. Pateni Nkuna, Director in the Employment Law Practice at Cliff Decker Hoffmeyer.